Hello, it's Sunday, February 18th of 2024, and today I'm here at the St. George Ferry Terminal to ride the strangest subway line, the Staten Island Railway line. The Staten Island Railway runs along the entire length of the island, from the St. George Ferry Terminal in the northeast to Tottenville in the southwest. The journey takes about 42 minutes on a local train. On the subway map, the line is shown in a little box in the bottom left corner. The Staten Island Railway runs every 30 minutes 24-7 to line up with the 30-minute frequency of the Staten Island Ferry to and from Manhattan. During rush hours, the train runs every 15 minutes in the reverse peak direction, and a peak direction express service is added that leaves two minutes before the local services. This express service gives all the stops from St. George all the way to Great Kills, cutting journey times by about 10 minutes. This may be the only place in the subway where a true express service is run on a two-track line. The statement ignores the subpar Jay-Z skip stop. You should check Check out that video, by the way. So I just arrived here from Manhattan on the free Staten Island Ferry, which actually departs from here. And now I'm gonna go down there to the Staten Island Railway platforms. So as you just saw, I just paid to get in the system, which is pretty standard. The fare is a classic, a normal subway fare, which is currently 290. But what's strange about the Staten Island Railway is that to exit here at St. George, I also have to pay. And that's because not every station has a ticket barrier. Only here at St. George and the next stop down, Tompkinsville, have enter and exit turnstiles. You have to pay to enter and exit. Every other station on the line, so all the way down to Tottenville, is has no turnstiles. So if you're just traveling between like Tottenville and some other station on the line, it's free, which is very interesting, I guess, because most people just go to St. George. It doesn't really matter, so it's cheaper to maintain, and you just pay on the exit, so it all works out for almost everybody pays anyway. Another thing you'll notice about St. George is that it has so many platforms for just one line. Most subway lines end in two platforms, or maybe three, three tracks. This one ends in 12, I think, but only 10 tracks are used because the last two tracks go to a branch that has been abandoned. So I'm pretty sure that 11 and 12 are never used. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> Yeah, I assume they're never used due to the fact that the platform is trashed. This is a really cool view of the station. Above me here is the bus bay. There are about four bays, I think, A, B, C, D. Um, and they're very nice, actually. But yeah, this is a really cool view of all the trains. If I walk further down the tracks 9 and 10 platform, you'll see that the 11 and 12 curves off to the right towards a branch that doesn't exist anymore. There used to be a branch from here, St. George, along the northern edge of the island, and another branch to the east towards South Beach. These were called the North Shore Branch and the South Beach Branch, respectively, but these were both closed in 1953. The MTA recently installed these very modern boards at a lot of subway stations, including the Staten Island Railroad, and this one sort of looks more like the Long Island Railroad boards at Penn Station, for example. It shows the time, the service, the track, and how long until the train. So the reason that St. George has so many tracks, like 12, for just one line, is that it acts like a yard, similar to how Grand Central has so many tracks, because it acts like a yard to Metro North. Instead of building a station, then a yard next to it, the, you can just access all of the tracks in the yard. Hello. These now boarding boards are actually really cool. It's like the guy flips some switches there and it shows like track four, local, Tottenville, now boarding, which is, yeah, it's nice. Something interesting is that although all the MTA information uses this SIR bullet, the actual trains don't have that. The conductor promised he's gonna do something really special for me and I'm really excited. Look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> it's the Yankee Staten Island. Oh, that's really cool. Thanks. So yeah, these are essentially subway cars. They're called the R44s, and they're soon going to be replaced by the R211Ss, which are much newer. And we're off. The landscape is so lovely with all the snow. I think Staten Island is the only place that you can find a bus map inside a subway train because there's just not enough lines. So they substitute them with the buses. Look at how many buses stop at St. George. And here we even see the minutes and like amount of cars. So to get to Tottenville, it's 42 minutes about from St. George and certain stations are too short, like Clifton. This is Tompkinsville, the only other station where you have to pay to enter and exit. Everywhere else is free, essentially. This train is so loud and shaky. Oh my God. Just stopped at Stapleton, was that? Uh, yeah, it's very nice, it's like red roof. Look at 
that Monopoly. Oop, train is repositioning, very common in DC. First time in New York. I think this is the only subway line where they have posted timetables. <laughs> you can see the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in the background that connects to Brooklyn. I think that where I am now between Clifton and Grasmere is the longest distance between two stations on the Staten Island Railroad, at least by appearance. I haven't measured it. Next time I'll walk down the track with a tape measure and make sure. These platforms are so narrow. Make sure to watch the gap, not mind the gap, but watch it. Look, we can just see into people's backyards, which is totally normal. Here's Donegan Hills, which is a very Irish sounding name. Huh. The platforms have like these like wooden, is this wood? This thing right here, I don't know. Look at all the kids playing in the snow. Or they're probably playing a sport or something, I'm not sure. So far, in my opinion, the Staten Island Railway has the best scenery out of any subway line, if it's even considered a subway line. I'm still not sure about that. So this is New Dorp Station, which is the furthest I've ever gone on the Staten Island Railway. So after this is all new territory for me. So many single family homes right next to a railroad. It's very interesting. Okay, so I've decided to get off at Bay Terrace because one, it's about halfway down the line, and two, the name stood out to me for some reason. I'll just go through a couple things that I noticed about this station. For one, very interesting land use, especially for a New York City subway station, essentially. There's parking and there are houses. The platform doesn't have the dots. It just has like a line, which is pretty strange. It's very narrow as the other stations are. If this was in Manhattan, it would be for a single track. If there was a wall here, it would be a normal size. This station is elevated above the side roads here on like Railway Avenue or something, I think it's called. And there are also departure boards, which are slightly wrong because this one says zero minutes, but it already left. So yeah, interesting, but these are very cool. I've never seen anything like this in New York. We also have sort of a railroad board style thing with uh, the schedule and this massive bus map. So we are here, which is like precisely a station that has no buses around it. So. Oh, that's interesting. So just to show you, if I go down here, you'll see that I haven't gone through any turnstiles and I'm on the road. And if I want to go to the platform, you just walk up. There's no barrier. Just to remind you all that this is New York City. Before I get back on the train in 30 minutes, I'm just going to explore the neighborhood and see what it's like out, out here in Staten Island, essentially the countryside for New Yorkers. There are so many mailboxes and cars. This is very different. And a bunch of wiring messes. This is very suburban. This does not feel like New York City, except for those traffic lights up ahead. So as you can see, this is very low density. These main roads feel like they could be upstate New York, you know, a smaller town. Just to show you how rural Staten Island is, the entire Staten Island Railway in 2022 had about 3.8 million passengers. I'll put the exact number here. For comparison, that's about as many as Jackson Heights 87th Street on the 7 train, the 67th busiest subway station. And here it's 3.8 million for the entire line. I am noticing though that that number may be quite off because most of the stations don't have turnstiles. So how are they measuring how many people are entering? Maybe they're only calculating entrances and exits at St. George and Tompkinsville. So these numbers could be quite off. Oh, well. <laughs> Here's the other exit on the south side of the station. This exit is much smaller. It just leads to South Railroad Avenue. And there's just this little tunnel here that leads to the other side. This place is so peaceful. I would not mind living here. I know it's quite far from places if you compare it to Queens or Brooklyn or Bronx or something for the Bronx, but it's probably way cheaper here too. And if you're right next to the railway, then you know, you can get around. I've also realized that since there's only one line, the Staten Island Railway, the entrances don't show what line it is. Like usually they'll say, the G train is here, even for lines that just have one line, like the G. But here it's just all trains, just like this Long Island Railroad or something. Coming here in the summer must be blissful. 
I have no idea, but I feel like most people that live in Staten Island and like people that commute to Manhattan probably use one of the many express buses, all these X buses here. Like there's so many. And if you don't know, the express buses are like expensive buses. They're like $7.50, but I think they're cheaper if you buy it monthly, but they're really nice. They're basically like simplified coach buses, like coach buses without a bathroom, but they have everything else. I also noticed that on the Staten Island Railway, the conductor sits in the back instead of the middle, like most trains. Yeah, the trains only seem four cars long. That makes sense. Hi, Bay Terrace. It was nice seeing you. This is Huguenot Station. I wonder why it's such a French name. I assume it's French because I feel like it would be Huguenot, not Hugonaut or Huguenot. Look, it's more of the same landscape. <laughs> Although it is nice, it does get quite repetitive. Oh, there's like a freight rail, freight rail cars up there. Huh, interesting. This is probably the only subway line where you can bring a bike. This is Pleasant Plains, and I've noticed that there's a little sticky outfit there. Right there. I wonder what that is. If anybody can tell me, that would be nice. Wow, this looks very strange. It's like an alien planet. This, on the other hand, is not so alien. This is Richmond Valley. If you didn't know, Staten Island is actually Richmond County. That over there is the Outer Bridge Crossing, which connects Staten Island here to New Jersey there, or on the other side. I'm pretty sure that it only supports car traffic, no pedestrians. And this is Arthur Kill Station, which opened very recently in 2017 and it replaced two other smaller stations, one on each side, they were very small, called Atlantic and Nassau. And the next stop is Tottenville. Ooh, I think this station is accessible because it's so uh, new, so they had to make it accessible. I wonder if any other station on the entire line is accessible. I'm not sure. We've just switched tracks to the left-hand track, now we're left-hand running, because this is a terminus. Look at these like tiny homes. Actually, they're not that small. They're decent size, but they're all the same. <laughs> and we're doing the classic New York thing of just stopping and starting before the actual terminus station. That's always fun. This is a very narrow walkway. I wonder if that's employees only. Wow, this is a lovely station. Like, I don't know, the station itself is okay, but the view is really nice. There's two exits, one on that side, and yeah, that walkway is an actual walkway. It's very narrow. It's a big fence, though. It's very cool. I also noticed that the flag on these trains is, like, sideways. It's, like, hanging down, which is interesting, because if I were to tilt it like that, it's actually the wrong way. It would be flipped. <laughs> so the train is going to wait here for another 10 minutes or so, and then turn around back to St. George. So I have a hypothetical. Let's say I live here in Tottenville and I work there in Kirk Hampton, or I want to buy something there or whatever. I need to get there for some reason. The only way I can get there currently is getting a car and driving across the Outer Bridge Crossing and driving around here. We're so close to over there, but there are no buses or any transit. There used to be a ferry, but that doesn't exist anymore. I don't think it has for a long time. I don't understand why there's not a ferry or a bus or a rail line that just extends just, just across this river. It's, this is, it's not even a river, it's an inlet, but it's like, it doesn't divide Staten Island and New Jersey, but it's about the size of the Hudson. It's not that wide. Some party going in in that tent there, that restaurant, seems like it. What shocks me is that this railway is 24 hours. I can't imagine standing here at like 2, 3 a.m. waiting for a train that comes every half hour. That's insane. So walking down here, <laughs> I can get to the overpass. Get some nice rain here too. Wow, this is so narrow, this is insane. Although that is a good view. <laughs> I'm like spying on this party. I can't even see it. I just hear the music. This is a very interesting looking car here, color wise. Wow, it's like a huge party.
So that was the entire Staten Island Railway. I hope you enjoyed. I've come back from the coast to end off my video. I think the view is great. The wind, though, not so much. <laughs> please consider liking, and if you loved it, please consider subscribing and maybe checking out some of my other content, especially videos on New York. But that's all from me for today. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I just walked down to the actual, like, sort of center of Tottenville. It's not really the center, but yeah, I got a croissant at Main Street Coffee. There's this cool bank here. It's nice and transit accessible. There are buses, too. It's pretty cool.